Hello, on this video, we're gonna talk about a topic we've been talking in the past, which is the earn schedule. And specifically, we're gonna be dealing with two problems. The first is how to calculate, actually how to automate the process to calculate it using Python. And the second is um, the data gauging process and how can we can avoid it. We're gonna refer to previous videos. So this is the curve of the error value metrics. And we're gonna talk about this again in, in a few minutes, but error value, it's basically made a projection, horizontal, horizontal projection into the plan value curve, and then going vertically down uh, to find out which is the period in which that error value should be earned. So first, we're, I'm gonna refer to this video I did in the past. In this video, I explained a little bit what means the error value calculation and also how to upload some Excel files into Power BI uh, to draw up some graph like the SQL, a Gantt chart, and some metrics. And finally, the, we did a manually calculation, um, which is, is not hard for a small project. But the thing is, if we want to do this in a large project, uh, here we need to be careful about which are the uh, plan value where this error value belongs. I did some manual corrections here in order to be accurate. Uh, and then if we want to work in large scale projects or many, many projects at the same time, so we need to automate the process. That's why I find Python really handy for this uh, process. Then on these uh, other videos, um, I explained how to connect uh, Power BI with basics information through the third file. The third file difference to the Excel file allows us to go into all the tables inside P6 and then manipulate the information inside that. But we need to have a little bit of knowledge which are the tables and which columns um, each table contains so we can manipulate. Additionally, in the last two videos, I show a little bit how to make a connection between uh, P6 and Power BI through, uh, through ODBC, which is a, a tool that allows us to make the straight connection without the third file, is with, is with the whole database. And also I show how to read this information in Python. Um, uh, but in that case, I show the option to use an ODBC. So to do that, we need to need to have installed the ODBC. But now I'm gonna show a different approach, and I'm gonna also deal to the error schedule calculation using an another library of Python called SQL Lightry. So I'm gonna jump in into the code. So here we go. So this is the Visual Studio, which is um, an ID IDE that allows me to write some Python code. So this is the library, SQLite3. And using this library, I don't need to have an ODBS because the information I'm reading is uh, com comes from a SQLite.database file. So, um, this uh, code here is SQL code. So this is not uh, properly Python, but we can run SQL code inside Python through this uh, library. And then, why do I do why do I do this here? Is to um, to select just specific columns of each uh, table and not load it all the tables. So it's like a pre-processing step in order to make the next tables I'm gonna work with uh, with less columns. So it's gonna be more readable. It's gonna be more useful and it's gonna be more <laughs> easy to process in the in the future. Um, and in the, the the way to read this is select these columns from this table, project, where I'm selecting specifically this project, EC00501, which is the project I've been talking in the past videos. And the project ID for this project is 4366. So I'm going to upload the next tables just where the project ID is equal to 4366. So all these tables here, what they, does is they, what they do is like selecting uh, information like task table, base table, uh, predecessor table. This is earn value. No, these are periods. This fin date table refers to periods like January, February, but in a in a in a code weight. Uh, 
the task fin is the air value that is inside this brick. So I choose this brick because it contains some air value metrics. So it's useful to it's useful for show you some uh, air value calculation metrics. So after I load the queries, I uh, I assign to each each query to a specific data frame. Data frame is an object of pandas, which is the library I'm using here. That is going to be allow me to make further calculations. Uh, uh, once I got, for example, the data frame for air value, which is um, is the query number six, which is uh, come from the table task fin from P6. Um, I use this um, way dub head, which allows me to see um, the first five rows of the table. As you can see here, I'm not seeing all the columns. For example, if you read a straight away, I'm here I'm reading with um, SQLite as well. I'm reading all the task table. So what can I see here is I have a, a lot of number of columns, like who was the user that created this activity or who was the user that updated the activity. So this is information needed for the solver, but it's not information I need to run my analysis. So I don't call it. If you want to show all the um, the columns inside um, a data frame, you need to write this, a data frame that columns that to list. So I'm going to run this. So you can see oh, I have all these columns. And I don't need it all of them to run my analysis. Yeah. OK. So then I use this function, which is called group by, which makes a sum based on the findens ID. And the findens ID re refers to a period. So it could be like this 202 refers to January, or 204 refers to April, you know? So all this, I'm grouping all the cost information, actual cost. In this case, uh, uh, P6 calls like by the traditional names or air value, which is BCWP, and plan value is BCWS. So I made this group by. We, I, I got it this actually from Power BI and learning to use it in Power BI and then implementing in, in, in Pandas data frames. Um, then I'm going to make a merge, which is also a Power BI function. Um, I'm going to call this to too. It's OK. It's useful for the software. But once we show the information, we need to show which month this represents. So it could be January, February, March, whatever. I'm going to call it, and then I'm going to transform this column into a date time. Um, and then I'm going to sort the values to be sure that the future uh, calculations are accurate. So because the next uh, calculation I'm going to make it is a cumulative sum to calculate the cumulative values. Then I filter this data frame into um, just the columns I need. A feature that we have in Pandas and uh, we need to be careful with this. It's useful sometimes and not all the times. I'm recalling the same data frame as the, uh, with the same name, DFEV, DFEV. So this is something that we cannot do in, in, in Power BI. In Power BI, if you want to, like here, for example, if you open the advanced editor, you're going to see all the code that is uh, in the, lang in the M language Power BI is writing for each step you make it. So each step is like it's creating a new table. And you cannot have two tables with the same name. It needs to be an, a, a new name. And this does makes a little bit heavy the files in Power BI. I'm going to come back to here. So this is really handy. I use this to show the process I'm going through, but it's not needed sometimes. Once you finish, you just uh, process the same information. So I'm going to run on, run all to, yeah. To be sure it, everything is OK. Uh, additionally, here in the row number 0, I'm going to add a row in the top with serial values, serials. And then to be sure that the first uh, error value, it's maybe it's lower than the first plan value. So it has a lower value to calculate the future, the next uh, uh, error schedule. So here is the, the, automation, the automated power. As I show you here, here is was a manual process, the earn schedule calculation, the earn scheduler. So here what I'm doing, it's uh, transforming this earn value and this plan value into a list. And then I'm going to go 
element by element to find out which are the lowest and upper plant value where that where the um, air value belongs. So I'm gonna air value look for a lower plant value and an upper plant value. So I'm doing this horizontal projection in, the, in that code. So I'm doing the horizontal projection. Uh, I have the indices, and then once I got the indices, I can run the formula in an automated way without, without needing a manual process. This is the automated process, the earn value schedule. It's for each earn value, and the lower plan value, the upper plan value, and the lower plan value. Uh, yep. And then finally, what I did here is like, we show the, we use this error schedule to calculate the metric, which is error schedule variance, but in weeks. In this case, I consider that, that amount has 4.2 weeks, but before it's up to you. Uh, and that's it. We got the table. And you can notice I haven't used Excel at all in this whole process. I just go straight away to the database of pieces, and then we can draw some graphs like the earth value matrix, actual uh, budget, air value, sorry, and budget of plan value. And also we can draw, sorry for here the mistake, but anyway, we can draw here the earth schedule against the plan value month, which is one for each month. And I really find Finally, I really find that Python has a large tool. That is process. For example, this is one example. And here's another example. When I did in my um, here, uh, when I draw some in the past, I, I find out really uh, useful using this gun chart in Power BI because it's really easy to build this gun chart from non p6 uh, users or maybe when i can use just like a uh, group level date so it's really easy to build this gun charts in, in, in power bi and it's really useful it's so visible it's, it's really convenient to have it but i find that it's hard to manipulate the size of the bars so we can manipulate like we want not to see by day, we want to see by month or by year, but it has some limitations because this graph was built for someone else that puts the, like some parameters. So yeah, I, I, I put this, for example, this uh, slicer on the bottom to adjust a little bit, but further than that, I cannot manipulate a lot the, the, the graph. Uh, instead on Python, uh, I, I need maybe write a little bit more of code, but I can just here on this example, I'm writing and I'm, I'm drawing too I'm showing too many different uh, activities or whatever, but I'm adjusting the scale I want to see. I just want to see the, the size of graph and I want to see maybe many years, maybe 10 years or maybe just 10 weeks. Whatever. So it's really um, adjustable it is we, we want. So maybe in the next video, I'm going to explore how to combine all this graph, this gun chart, and also this error schedule chart in this one graph, a big graph, like could be like the way we did in, in, in Power BI. So that's everything for today. Thanks.